With the world being a stage in our scripted reality, I feel like this interview with former aerospace executive Dr. Carol Rosen has really flown under the radar as far as predictive programming is concerned. And of course, if anybody has seen this interview, they'll know it's all about the former head of NASA, Werner Von Braun, as you can see here, side by side with JFK, two major players in the world stage, and also his very famous tombstone with Werner Von Braun back from 1977 with the Bible verse, Psalms 19.1, all regarding the flat earth where it states, the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork. And for those that don't know, this is the Bible cosmology. Basically, the firmament is the structure above the atmosphere conceived as a vast solid dome. And definitely a lot is revealed in a very short interview again with Dr. Carol Rose, and let's get right to it. When I was a corporate manager of Fairchild Industries in 1974 through 77, I met the late Dr. Werner von Braun in early 74. At that time, von Braun was dying of cancer, but he assured me that he would live a few more years in order to tell me about the game that was being played. That game being the effort to weaponize space, to control the Earth from space and space itself. The strategy that Werner von Braun taught me was that first the Russians are going to be considered to be the enemy. In fact, when I met him in 74, they were the enemy, the identified enemy. We were told that they had killer satellites. We were told that they were coming to get us and control us, the dirty commies, that whole story. First, the Russians were the enemy against whom we're going to build space-based weapons. Then terrorists would be identified, and that was soon to follow. And as, I, as you can see here, these individuals, as we all know, these are just, again, players in the world stage, nothing more than actors. And what I find very interesting, with all these stories throughout the years, they never add up, they never make sense. There's many so-called glitches in the Matrix and let's take a look at one here with OBL, with the supposed capture. This is him supposedly watching TV of himself in Pakistan before his so-called passing. And this is pretty funny with the uh, Obama on the screen himself. And this is going to start another conspiracy with them side by side, of course, with many claiming that the same two individuals. But nonetheless, little, again, glitch in the Matrix with the power strip on the ground. Again, this is supposedly in Pakistan. Here's the major issue. If you get a little bit of a close-up here, you can see, again, the devil's in the details. This does not add up. This is a U.S. power strip. And I'm going to show you in Pakistan where they use these three-prong power cords, basically these plugs, used in India, Pakistan, and other countries in the region this is definitely no three prong again power strip where these plugs go in so again always with these stories there's always inconsistencies things don't add up things don't make sense of course with the world being again a stage and things just not adding up and literally there is no way around this again looking at the the power cord that's used the plug itself and here's a power strip that would be used in India or Pakistan. Basically, neighbors using the same, again, power plug. And this is, you know, little details that people, you know, that miss, that won't see. And they'll just fall for the story. We'll get on the topic of flat earth. These are relevant key things to really set the stage. So people know we're literally living in a matrix, this lie system, with, of course, the event of the capture of the leader back in 2003 in the Middle East. And here's a major gaffe. You see some, some dupe in the light with this one soldier. And look in the background. This is, again, things in plain sight that people miss. And this is a date palm. Supposedly captured in December, the middle of December 2003. And literally this is impossible for Iraq to have a date palm tree or anywhere in the Middle East in the middle of winter, basically, this can happen. These date palms, the season ends in August. That's when they harvest them and dry them out and put them for sale on the markets. 
And here's another, another photo here again with the date pump. So again, just like the power strip with OBL, just these little Easter eggs in plain sight. And obviously they can have this done properly, but I believe they let this out, you know, for those that have eyes to see. And again, just mockery in plain sight, always with these Easter eggs. But I continue on here again with the world being a stage and more being revealed with Dr. Carol Rosen. Let's continue. And the next enemy was asteroids. Now at this point, he kind of chuckled the first time he said it. Asteroids against asteroids were going to build space-based weapons. Now that gets into the whole entire aspect with the Atari 2600, which is the title of the video. So asteroids, and you see here where it says game program with 66 games, of course, Masonic number. So definitely when they release these products to the market, just like Apple Computer with the buyer of the Apple, it's all about the occult and Delphi with Atari 2600. Very interesting connection here with the release date of September 11th, 1977. Definitely not by chance or coincidence of that release date. And again, Asteroids was the, the next so-called enemy that'll be facing mankind. And let's continue on here with the next enemy, so-called enemy that's facing humanity. And the funniest one of all was against what he called aliens, extraterrestrials. That would be the final card. And over and over and over during the four years that I knew him and was giving his speeches for him, he would bring up that last card. And remember, Carol, the last card is the alien card. We're going to have to build space-based weapons against aliens. And all of it, he said, is a lie. And of course, the very famous game, again, by Atari 2600, Space Invaders. Again, this is all about programming. Again, with it saying, you know, right in the box, game program. That's what it's all about. And I find it very interesting with the spaceship itself. It's almost like the Flat Earth model with the civilization. And it appears to have a glass ceiling, a glass dome above it. Now, let's get right to this commercial going back to the late 70s regarding space invaders. I found it very interesting what is said here, which I believe is truth in plain sight. Out here we entertain ourselves at home. So we got an Atari video game. There's so many different games to play. We especially like space invaders. Zapping those little devils from outer space. And he calls those little aliens devils from outer space. Definitely truth in plain sight where, again, there's no, of course, deep space. There's no aliens. They're basically demons in disguise and I find it very interesting. All in plain sight and, of course, just reading off the script as an actor. And, again, talking about Flat Earth, I found this interesting with this one particular game. As you can see, the title, Super Breakout, with the orange box, of course, orange being 33 numerology. And the astronauts and the whole premise of this game is basically, according to the instructions for this game, they are trying to break through a force field to get in outer space with their space shuttle. But just take a look at the gameplay itself. Literally, for those that know about the ferment, the flat earth ferment, they're basically trying to break through the ferment itself. So, again, this is another example of truth in plain sight. Again, with these astronauts. Unbelievable. And again, the whole occult of when it comes down to Atari 2600 on the release date, September 11, 1977. And just take a look again at the logo. And this is a very important aspect that I always cover when it comes to Freemason Manly P. Hall, who famously stated, when the human race learns to read the language of symbolism, a great veil will fall from the eyes of men. And again, that gets back to the logo itself from Atari 2600. Basically, when it comes down to it, it is a trident, just like you see here, this false god Poseidon with the trident. And there are many variations of the trident itself, as you can see here. And again, talking about this particular date, of course, with the release date, like I mentioned earlier, with the Atari 2600 and the trident itself with the logo. 
And definitely when you flip it upside down, you see the trident symbolism, just like this one right here to the bottom right corner definitely resembles it. This is again, this is how these people work. They operate and taking a look again when it comes down to it on the same date, the release date of the Charge 2600, how it all coincides with the towers and you have the trident symbolism in plain sight no doubt whatsoever and of course the monuments themselves basically you have two tridents and turn them sideways and you literally have your dual 33s when it comes to freemasonry as i show many times with the grand sovereign commander and again the dual 33s and just take a look at this depiction here with baphomet in the upside down pentagram and again the dual tridents and of course, you can see here as well, the upside down cross, many other symbolism in plain sight, as always, multiple symbolism, never just one. And again, when you turn it sideways, you get your dual 33 with the tridents hidden in plain sight. And also, I should mention the three fingers with this, the whole entire symbolism. Like I said, there's much more. Uh, people could break it down as they always do when they look at these things and see other, find other details breaking the chains and all now taking a look here as i covered before in previous videos regarding jfk and daily plaza very important aerial view and this is definitely again a trident in plain sight and this is where of course where it all supposedly went down nothing but of course a manufactured hoax with the world being a stage and again here's another angle of daily plaza and definitely again very similar not the same very similar to the Atari logo and the Trident as we already went through. And again, when it comes down to it, like I showed with the Manly P. Hall quote earlier about learning to read the language of symbolism and a great veil falling from the eyes of men. And of course, this very famous quote as well from Confucius, how it's where it states, signs and symbols rule the world, not words nor laws. So again, with everything I've, I've demonstrated in this presentation, it's going to be very clear how the people that run this world, they run every aspect. That definitely includes even something uh, seemingly innocent like video games, of course. The computer industry such as Apple going back to the 70s with Byte into an Apple. And the first Apple computer, of course, as you can see here, selling for $666.66. And again, all the occult with the buy into an apple like i mentioned and the concept of the ram the memory and so again everything is all about the occult hidden in plain sight and getting again back to carol rose and a very very important uh very short interview with her but a very important key aspect basically demonstrating how werner von braun was privy to very important information regarding the world stage of course taking part of the nasa deception and again all these people at the very top of this world they know what's going on and they definitely know the world is flat